in the early 90s and mid 90s, I was a console games programmer in Norway, working for Funcom. And one afternoon was rainy, cold, and we were going to buy some ticket to go to the sun with some friends. So a friend of mine is waiting to buy tickets. Meanwhile, I went to the store and bought a board game called Europe Universalis. Four years later, I see a company is starting up in Sweden to make a game on that board game. I went like, hey, I want to do that. So I moved here and that's history. EO1 took about two and a half years to develop. I think we shipped about 100,000 copies in total in the first few months and it sold nicely and went really well for us. EU2 was a lot about these historical events and fairly railroaded, historically accurate thing. And, and EU3, we tried to go a more dynamic route. We tried to model the historical events in dynamic gameplay, but more generalized. In EU4, we tried to get these two items together in a good mix where the player creates his own destiny and also give each country a feel of that country's unique character in history. European Universalis is, is really the core of what a paradox game is about. I mean, it's really where, where this company began, you can say. It's about you take on the role of a country during the age of exploration. In EU4, you start off in 1444 and you end the game in 1820. And it's, it's like you, you take on any country in the world so you can basically create your own history and your own dynamic. And it's really up to you and you can, you can sort of shape history and your gameplay in any direction that you want. The challenge for us is that if we have a sandbox game where the player creates his own future, nothing will ever happen exactly like it did in history. But we want it to be possible, we want to have plausible historical uh, accuracy. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges, to have a game that is a game where you win and you optimize various stats and you win the game, but also have a feel that you play within the historical context. I'm working on uh, Hearts of Iron 4, a sequel to uh, Hearts of Iron 3, and it's a uh, World War II game where you basically play any nation uh, from 1936 and you try and guide it through World War II. Is this going to be more of a railroaded game or is this going to be more of a sandbox game? We varied this between the games and this time we're sort of aiming for more of a sandbox thing but with like heavy emphasis on plausibility. So that's the kind of thing we want to capture this time, not necessarily being able to conquer the world as Switzerland. Which, uh, you know, it would feel very wrong in a game that just takes place for 10 years. Crusader Kings 2 is an evolution of a concept. The first game, Crusader Kings, was released in, I believe, 2004. And it wasn't a huge hit or success for us, but I think it proved that the concept of a strategy game with families and with role-playing elements and characters and uh, as opposed to nations could have been better uh, realized. So Crusader Kings 2 is basically uh, the evolution of that concept or that idea that we had. So what we did with the sequel was that we strengthened the character focus and the immersion and the sense that you're actually playing a ruler and that you're in there in the world interacting with other characters and especially your family and your dynasty of course. Looking out for them, taking care of them and uh, killing your brothers, of course. Crusader Kings 2 was released two years ago now, in 2012, and it has evolved a lot since release. It is a far more polished and a far deeper game than it was two years ago. When we support a game long after release, like Crusader Kings 2 now, one might think the uh, problems are uh, financial or uh, thinking of stuff to do, but I think the problem could be keeping the spirit up for everyone in the team, keeping the passion burning. And uh, that's something we're working on and everyone can be part of the design. And that's how we feel we can remedy that. We absolutely take impressions and feedback from the community and incorporate into our games. Before I started at Parox, I came into contact with the company because I, I, you know, I played EU1 and EU2. And, uh, and I was also a bit, little bit involved in the beta and then when they started looking for for people to work at Paradox, I was like, cool, what an opportunity. When we design a game at PDS, we first think of ourselves, what kind of game do we want to play? Um, because we are gamers and we do enjoy the strategy games and uh, now Rune Master, which is something brand new and also something we do because it's fun to mix things up a bit. Rune Master differ from our other games, our historical grand strategy games, by being an RPG. But it also differs because it doesn't use historical sources this time. 
Everything is fantasy, you could say. We draw inspiration for Runemaster from the Nordic mythology, the poetic Edda and old Icelandic sagas and myths and legends. The core of Runemaster is it's about, an, about Ragnarok, about how you as a hero have to stop it in any way possible. Or you might have to mm, make sure it happens. And you do that by, by either killing Loki or killing Thor. You won't have any side quest in uh, Rune Master. Every quest you play will be a part of the bigger picture. Everything you do will have an impact on the main story and on yourself. And we want emergence storytelling in this game. So every quest you make will be your quest. It will be your story. And we hope to make a game with as much emergent storytelling as Crusader Kings 2 has. We're not just limited to one genre. I mean, we'll always make historical event strategy games. I mean, we could do completely different games as long as they are thinking games, as long as they are fun and immersive games. I mean, we could make space games for all I know. I mean, or we could make, I don't know. I, I don't think we're gonna make, make like a fishing simulator or an FPS because it's like, that's not the type of games I like. I have the best job in the world. I get to do games. I get to tell other people to make the type of games I want made. It's like people dream of these kind of jobs. So we want to thank you guys, the fans, for being passionate and enjoying our games and telling others about it. And uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>